Hey folks, welcome to the channel. This is the Power Urus 200 amp hour 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery we're gonna be taking a look at and doing a few tests on this video to uh, determine if the $579.99 price tag is worth your money. Actually, technically it's $679 with a $100 off coupon on Amazon as of the date of making this video. Um, so around 579 bucks, that's, that's in the average to a little bit higher range for a 12.8 volt LiPo 4 battery. But there are a couple of things on this battery. It features a 200 amp BMS, which is a little bit of an upgrade to your standard 100 amp BMS. So it can jumpstart, it can run larger appliances than your standard 100 amp BMS. It's got an app built into it that you can log into it and remotely check your state of charge, your amount of current going in and out of the battery, which is always extremely useful. That means you don't have to wire in a shunt and, and kind of go through all that mess. It's just a lot easier if these things have an app. Open up the app, check where the battery stands and state of charge, see what's going in and out. I love batteries that have an app on them. I will say the only kind of annoying thing about this battery in the app is there's nothing on the battery to dictate that A, it is Bluetooth, and B, what app you have to download. That it, it was a little bit difficult determining that, so I actually had to contact Power Urus to see how you do it. They sent me a manual, but even on the Amazon listing, I also did find it, and you have to download an app called the Roy Pow Fish. I have no idea what that means. Roy Pow Fish app, and that is the app that actually talks to this battery. When you download that app, you have to hit add device and it pulls up every single Bluetooth device you have in your home. You have to find the, this battery and that took me a good five or six minutes in terms of clicking each thing that I didn't know what my Bluetooth name was for items I have in the house to finally find the battery. That was a little bit kind of disappointing and a little bit annoying. Uh, just the fact that it was kind of hard to, to find the app and then find the battery inside that app. But after all that said and done, the app works just fine. Uh, it's kind of bare bones, but it shows you the state of charge, current going in and out in each of the cells voltage range. So you can see if you have one cell that's kind of out of whack from all the other three. So it, it gives you everything that you need. So I'm not gonna try to draw this video out. You just wanna know about this battery. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that I did a DC, a straight DC capacity discharge test. I did not wanna use an inverter because I didn't want that to skew the amount that this battery could discharge. So take that out of the equation, straight DC discharge test. I was able to get 210 amp hours pulled out of this battery running about 170 watt draw. So it took quite a while. So this battery was discharging a long time and 210 amp hours off of that test uh, is great. Again, this is only rated at 200 amps. So 10 more amp hours squeeze out of this battery than what is rated. So that's kind of the first and foremost test that people want to make sure is when they buy a 200 amp hour battery, are they actually going to get 200 amps? Well, in this case, you get a bonus 10 amp hours, at least on my battery. Let's get this thing. Now with this being a 200 amp BMS, you can, you can discharge 200 amps. I don't have an inverter that's capable of up to 200 amps without popping the fuse every single time. And I'll be honest, guys, 200 amps on a 12.8 volt system is a lot of amps. You need really large cabling to do that safely, which is expensive, um, but it's good that this is in the tank if you need that extra bit of energy to say kickstart an RV air conditioner unit. 13.5, 15K BTU roof mounted AC unit. If you have a large enough inverter, this 200 amps could probably get that done, but you're gonna need some really, really fat cables to, to keep that running safely. But I'm gonna hook this up to my test inverter with the shunt and app and everything on there so we can monitor how this thing does, but let's get going. So the setup here, guys, before I put you on the tripod, I've got the battery hooked up to my 2200 watt Guillendel inverter. We do have all of our shunts in line and we are connected so we'll be able to monitor the amperage coming out of that battery or coming out of this inverter to uh, see how close we can get to that 200 amps without popping that 175 amp fuse so good luck to me and for our devices we're going to be running i've got a 1500 watt heat gun and a little 500 watt space heater both hooked up to this inverter so let's get this test going all right, got my clamp meter here. Does anyone want to take bets if I'm going to pop this fuse or not? Because I'm betting that I will. But I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up. This heater is going to cut on first. So we are pulling with that heater. It's, it's slowly climbing, but we're at 52 amps right now. 
that heater's kind of settling down. We're around 44 amps, 43 amps. Okay, I'm gonna cut this heat gun on kind of low setting to begin with. And that immediately gets us over to 100 amps. We're at 101 amps right now. Kick it up to full blast. 173 amps. So that shunt is showing 175 amps. My clamp meter, 177 amps. So I'd say that's fairly close. Fuse is looking all right <laughs> for now. Inverters obviously working fine. Cables are a bit warm to the touch, but that's what you're gonna expect with 12.8 volts and 175 amps going through this cabling. Let's turn this garage into an oven. So I'm gonna get my timer going. See if this will run, let's say five minutes, 175 amps. Well, gang, I'm gonna keep this timer going, but I wanna show you the app of this battery. So we're gonna click into the Roy Pal Fish app. We have connected to the battery. You can see my state of charge is 96% and we are discharging 175.7 amps. And you can see down here all the different cells, the voltages and the temperature of each of those four cells on that battery. And we're at 96% state of charge. So overall, I mean, the app is nothing, nothing spectacular, but it does give you, you know, pretty much everything that, that you would normally want when you log into your battery to see where you stand. And we're at three minutes and almost 30 seconds into this test. And it's getting warm in here. Still pulling 179 amps. And I can confirm that with my shunt, 179 amps. Cables are warm. That lug is 103 degrees. The actual cable, not too bad, 88. The inverter is sitting at 100.4. So that's the thing guys with 12.8 volt batteries, running this amount of amps creates a lot of heat. So in all reality, this, this is not thick enough cabling to safely pull this many amps. Uh, however, I'm here in the shop. I'm not gonna be doing this for a long time, so I'm okay with it. But if, if you're gonna get a setup like this to run 180 or 200 amps, get much thicker cabling, because uh, there's a lot of current going through these cables, which creates a lot of heat. So uh, this really probably is not enough. And I'm talking and I didn't even realize we have passed the five minute mark. So I've got the heater disconnected. I'm gonna hook up another heat gun and uh, see what we can do to get this thing to trip. The inverter's probably gonna trip before the battery BMS does. So I got a second heat gun here. We'll plug it in, see what happens. All right, 222 amps. Wow, 2,714 watts. So this inverter is cooking. So there are 222 amps, 2,708 watts, 221 amps, and we are still at seven minutes and almost 40 seconds into this test. Hot, <laughs> hot. I'm really surprised this is still going, guys, especially given the fact this is a 2200 watt continuous inverter and we're pulling 2,700 watts right now. But this lug is now at 120 degrees. My cable, 115 degrees. And the top of this guy, 121 degrees. So everything is warm, warm, warm but it's working. But I'm gonna get this cut off now because it's getting warm in here. So we were going strong for let's say nine minutes, guys, at 220-ish amps. That, uh, that is a lot of current going through this battery. 
and powering these little heat guns. So, so as you can see, guys, this Power Urus can power it. It's got, it does have that 200 amp BMS in it, so it does have enough horsepower underneath that lid uh, to run quite a bit of large equipment or appliances. But again, if you're going to do that, make sure you have much thicker gauge cabling than what I'm using for this test. But overall, guys, it, it worked really, really well. I'm mainly surprised that this 2200 watt inverter was able to handle 2700 watts for five, six, seven minutes. And she's warm, though. She is definitely warm to the touch, but it worked. Well, that's about it for the testing, guys. 210 amp hours off of the DC capacity test. And you saw 220 amps uh, continuously for around eight to 10 minutes. That's a lot for a 12.8 volt system. And I wouldn't recommend doing that, but the BMS in this is capable of pushing out that much power if needed. Now, of course, this does have all of your standard LiPo 4 BMS features, all your safety features built into it. You got your M8 terminal bolts. You got a little vent cap up here on the top of the battery, which is kind of unique to Power Urus. I've had another one of their batteries that have this little vent here. Not too sure how necessary that is, but, but that's what that little nubbin is up front. It does not have low temp charging protection, and that's not that big of a deal, honestly, especially for me here down south. It hardly ever gets below freezing. Um, and if you are up north and you, you really, really want low temp charging protection, there are ways around it where you can hook up temperature probes to your charger to make sure your charger doesn't charge below freezing. There's ways around it is what I'm trying to get at. But don't always let a battery that doesn't have low temp charging protection built into it kind of steer you away because there's, there's workarounds for it. And typically, the batteries are just a little bit cheaper that don't have it. Granted, it only probably costs the manufacturer $2 to put that temperature sensor in here. I don't know why they all don't do it, but they, they all don't. And this battery weighs 60 pounds. So it is, you know, these 12.8 volt batteries, especially a 200 amp hour battery, they're not lightweight. Two, uh, 60 pounds is a bit of a heft. You do have to, you got to grunt a little bit when you pick it up. I'll be honest. So it, it's not something that you're going to throw over your shoulder and uh, easily move around, but there's a lot of cells in here and 200 amp hours is a lot of lithium iron phosphate battery. So Keep that in mind. Um, but other than that, guys, the battery worked. It did just fine. And that's about all the testing I can do on this right now. So I'll leave a link for this in the description below. Again, as of right now, when I'm releasing this video, normally $679.99. There's a $100 off coupon on Amazon for $579.99. I don't know how long that's going to last. But if you catch that sale, it's really not a bad deal for a 200 amp hour battery with a 200 amp BMS with Bluetooth. So. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care and we will see you soon.